Okay, so here we have a another sample problem. Uh, so here it says uh, uh, we have an alpha particle. Alpha particle means it has uh, two protons and two neutrons. So it's like a, a helium high. Uh, okay, helium. Yeah. So, but yeah, it doesn't mention that uh, there is electron. So like uh, only with two protons and two neutrons. So yeah, with two positive charge. Uh, two positive uh, elementary charge. So this is the alpha particle. And then move into a stationary gold atom. So this is the gold atom, much much larger. So it has uh, 79 protons and 118 neutrons. Okay, passing through the electron region that surrounds the gold nucleus like a shell and headed directly toward the nucleus. So the alpha particle sh slow down until it momentarily stop when it is centered at uh, radian distance. Okay. So the the idea is like up to here is like we have a gold nucleus, assuming it is stationary, putting there, and then from far away we have an alpha particle. It try to shoot it to the gold, and then it will it will slow down, and then finally it will return. Actually, it feels like they, they just collide, but actually, they don't uh, physically touch each other. It goes to a small distance, called small r, and then it will return. So it's so-called the electro uh, electromagnetic force. Uh, electromagnetic force. They don't really touch, but actually the, the force will push, push the uh, alpha particle away. We just uh, uh, ignore the, the movement of the of the of the gold nucleus because uh, the gold nucleus is much uh, heavy. Okay, so then it moves back along its incoming path. Because the gold nucleus is much more massive than the alpha particle, we can assume the gold nucleus doesn't move. Okay, so just uh, as uh, what I mentioned, we just assume that it doesn't move at all, even after the collision. Okay, so it asks what is the kinetic energy what is the kinetic energy, Ki, of the alpha particle when it was initially far away, hence, uh, exter uh, hence external to the gold atom. Okay. So it, it is just like, uh, uh, initially, it, it, have, it is infinitely far away. So it has kinetic energy. And then the initial potential energy is zero at at infinity, at, uh, ui is zero at infinity. So it has uh, initial kinetic energy. And then when it try to move closer to the alpha particle, the kinetic energy will be will transfer to the potential energy. So up to this point, up to this point, it becomes slower and slower until this point, kf, the final kinetic energy is zero. All the kinetic energy transfer to transfer to uh, potential energy. So this is the maximum potential energy, which should be equal to Ki. It should be equal to Ki. So by by so in this problem, we we will be able to use the conservation of energy to to solve this problem. Okay. So it was in far away, and then hence there is a. Uh, uh, assume that the only force acting between the alpha particle and the gold nucleus is the electrostatic uh, coulomb force. Okay, so in that case, as I mentioned, we can just use uh, uh, we can just use uh, the conservation of energy. But here we all we already know that uh, Ki plus uh, Ui equals uh, Kf plus Uf. Okay. But here we already know that uh, this one is zero. This one is zero. Uh, this one is also zero, just as what I mentioned. Okay, it's just stop here and then go back. It's just like you try to uh, roll a ball. Okay, at, at, at the very beginning, uh, or oh, this is the other way around. Uh, if you have a potential energy and then you roll down and then it has the maximum kinetic energy and then they go back. So this is the other way around. So for this case, Initially, it has a kinetic energy transfer all to the potential energy, and then go back. Okay, 
so uh, so it's the other way around. It, it should be like it should be like uh, it should be like that or something like that. Okay, initially it, it have kinetic energy and then go up and then finally fall down something like that. Or maybe this is uh, very long, so it maybe go to somewhere and then and then you roll back. It should be yeah, it should be something like that, uh, like a like a ramp. Okay. There are some kind of energy to let this ball uh, go up and then uh, ignoring the, the frictional force. And then if all the kinetic energy transfer to a potential energy, and then uh, it will stop and then go back. Okay, something like that. So here we have UF equals KI. UF equals KI. And here uh, it asks you what is the KI. So KI equals UF. For UF, we already know that R is this distance, okay? So we may be able to calculate it by K times Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2 over R. And then for Q1, Q2, Q1, this is 2P, this is 79P. So, okay, we can just write it as K to be uh, 8.99 times 10 to the 9th power, and then times Q1, two proton. So it will be 2 and then times, this is 79, so 79 and then times uh, 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 quantity square, okay, for, for proton, it should have an elementary charge, so yeah, both of them are protons, so this times square, okay, so divided by this one, 9.23 times 10 to what power, Frento. <laughs> Do you remember, frontal should be negative 15. Negative 15, hope you can uh, remember all the scientific prefix uh, from frontal, pico, nano, micro, bd, and then kilo, mega, giga, tera, okay. So should be able to, to remember them from negative 15, negative 12, negative uh, nine, negative six, negative third, and then third, six, nine, 12. Okay, so this number will be, um, let me see, this number will be uh, 3.94 times 10 to negative 11 joule, okay. okay. So of course, joule is a uh, uh, SI unit, no problem, okay, if you answer this. But for the particle physics, they will use another um, unit which is not the SI unit but they tend to use that so if you need to convert it to another uh, 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 unit called EV 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 okay then you need to what you need to do is divide this number by 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 which is the elementary charge then this this value become EV. Okay, so this number becomes twenty four point six times ten to the six power EV, or they will just write it as twenty four point six mega EV, mega EV. So this is usually they usually use the EV or mega EV, giga EV for the uh, particle physics. Okay, so to convert it. It is just to divide 1.6 times 10 to, minus, 10 to minus 19. The idea is that this number is much bigger. They don't like the number with a very, very small order, like a 10 to negative 12. Okay. Okay. So in Chinese, this one is called 电子福特. 电子福特. Okay. So the physical meaning of EV is like you try to accelerate an electron with a uh, one volt electric potential. And then after accelerating with one EV then, yeah. So yeah, the, the energy will be like that. Okay, so far any questions? Okay.
So here we talk about uh, the potential of a uh, charge isolated conductor. Okay, so this is nothing special. Okay, so it's just try to summarize two important equation in this chapter. One of it is this one. This one is uh, occurs first. So we, if we have the E, of course uh, the original version is like E vector dotted with DS vector. Okay, but here we only consider or E is the S axis component. Okay, so it only write like this. Okay, so we have a delta V between two points will be the negative of the line integral of uh, E dot DS and then from I to F. And then the reverse the reverse version will be like taking the derivative along the R axis and then take the minus sign will be the E field, uh, will be the E field magnitude. Okay, so yeah, so here it says an excess charge placed on an isolated conductor will distribute itself on the surface surface of the conductor, just as what I mentioned before. So if it is an isolated conductor, all the charge will go to the surface. And in that case, uh, there should be no E field inside the conductor. So uh, so that all points of the conductor, whether on the surface or inside, come to the same potential, same potential. The idea is easy because, as I mentioned, inside the conductor, there is no E field. Uh, suppose this is a conductor. Inside it, the E field should be, should be zero. So, so if you draw a path inside the conductor, okay, and then you try to do the integration, and then e dot ds, as uh, much as e is zero, then no matter which path you choose, then this integral will be zero, which means that inside the conductor, for every point, the electric potential should be the same for the whole for the whole conductor. So this is true, even if the conductor has an internal cavity. This is Kong Xing the Kong Xing the, and even if the cavity contains a net charge, okay, so inside it, it there shouldn't it, there shouldn't be any E field, okay. So this figure just so okay. So this car is the the, the yeah the shell is like the the is of course a conductor, and then it try to use some yeah lightning to to <laughs> to hit it, and then this guy inside is still safe because. Yeah, inside the car, it is. It should have the same potential. It should have the same potential, it, which means that there will be no uh, current going through the guy. Okay, normally we were afraid of a uh, yeah something like the electricity safety. It's like if you just try to touch the the socket, then there may be some power especially power going through your body, then, then you'll be hurt by it. But for this one, as much as for the whole car, it is isolated conductor, then there will be no potential difference. Then there will be no current going through the guy, then the guy will be safe. Okay, so on the left, it just show a something like you just try to use a graph, a two graph to demonstrate the idea here. So here we try to assume that we have a sphere with radius, with radius r to r to be one meter, uh, with r to be one meter. So this is a conducting con conducting uh, conducting sphere, conducting sphere. Okay. So in that in that case. In that case, so inside one meter, as I mentioned, there should be no E field. So from zero to one meter, the potential should be a constant, should be a constant. And then, and then outside it, and then outside it, uh, there will, there may be, there may be extra, ex, uh, there may be some charge on this, uh, on this sphere. There may be some charge, okay. Okay, so there may be E field, there will be E field uh, pointing outwards in a radial direction, okay? And then it will, it will uh, decrease because the expression of E will be like K times uh, Q over R squared, something like this, 
something like this. So you can see uh, this part, this part is proportional to one over r squared. Okay, so if you try to go from top to bottom, go from top to bottom, you would like to use dv dr and then take the negative sign. Okay, so if you try to take the derivative of this part, okay, the slope is zero. So here it corresponds to the zero here. Correspond to the zero here. Okay, so if we try to go further, okay, so for example, for starting from this part, the the the, the slope will be a negative value. The slope will be a negative value. The slope will be a negative value. So the derivative is a negative value, but here we also have another negative sign. So it turns out all these values are positive. All these values are positive. And then they start to decrease. The, you can also see, okay, for, for this one, the slope is, the, the, at least the absolute value of the slope is larger than this part or this part. Okay, you can clearly see that the slope, the absolute value of the slope is decreasing. So you can also see uh, this, this is also decreasing. And of course, if you try to plug in this one into here, you can see that, yeah, um, yeah. Ah, sorry. This this one should be this one should be one over r. This is v. This is not. Uh, this is three. This is not e. E e is proportional to one over r squared. Okay. So this one should be proportional to uh, one over r or inversely proportional to r. Okay. So if you take the derivative of it. Negative one power will become negative two power. So we have this one. So from here to here. Okay, so this one. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to go from bottom to top, okay, then this is E. So you need to use the integration. You need to use the integration. So at the very beginning, there should be a reference voltage. Okay, don't ask why is this value. So just a reference uh, voltage. And then you try to calculate e dot e d s for this part, but from z one to zero to one meter, it is zero. So e dot d s integration will be zero. So here it doesn't change at all. But starting from here, we try to integrating something, integrating something. Of course, for example, this one is a positive value. This one is a positive value. So positive value all the way. So yeah, so if you, you are trying to integrating some positive value, but here we have a negative sign. So it turns out that oh, this is decreasing. This is decreasing. And as much as we try to integrate this one over r squared, it becomes one over r. So you can, you can using this one and this one to explain uh, why the curve of this one and this one like this. So of course, one thing to, to, to uh, notice is that the voltage here is continuous. The voltage here is continuous. But the E field is not. The E field here has a, has a jump here. It is not continuous. Yeah, because if you really need to take the derivative, at least it is, at least it is uh, continuous to take the derivative. But for integration, it doesn't necessary to be continuous. Of course, in mathematical class, it, it tells you that uh, even for continuous uh, function, it, it might not be able to, to detect the derivative. So here, the derivative of actually this point is not defined. <laughs> but, but that is for only for uh, mathematical class, for physics class. Yeah, we are not so uh, rigorous for that uh, detail. Okay. So, uh, so, so, so far, uh, we have learned a lot of variable from chapter 21, 22, 23, and 24. We totally have uh, several variables like uh, forces, uh, E-field, potential, potential energy. Okay. So here, we uh, try to summarize them in a page. So in chapter 21, in chapter 21, you learn this one. You learn the electrostatic force, or known as the... Coulomb's force, Coulomb's force, which is uh, F equals K times Q, Q0 over R squared. Or at that time, it just call it Q1, Q2. So just a name doesn't really matter. So I just put it Q, Q0 to, to match the other one. Okay, so we have electrostatic force. 
in chapter 21. In chapter 22, we have uh, electric field. So electric field, uh, at that time, for the very beginning, uh, we use the definition like E equals F over Q0. That is the original uh, definition of E field. So by this de definition, so this Q0 and Q0 cancel. So it turns out that E field is K times Q over R square, of course with the R hat. Okay, so chapter 21, 22, we have these two. And then in this chapter, we learn electric potential and also the electric potential energy or potential energy. Okay, so, um, so here we have electric potential and also the potential energy. So we need to get this one and this one by, uh, for example, from E to V, it should be this one. The negative of gradient V will become the E field. Okay, so from bottom to top. If you need to go from top to bottom, you need to use the negative of the line integration of E dot dS, okay, like this. So if you do the integration of this one, R, R square will become R. So we have Q out. So on the right side, we have Q in the uh, numerator. On the left, we have Q, Q0, Q, Q0 in the numerator. And then for between V and U, we also have this uh, like definition. So U become, U is actually Q0 times B. U equals Q0 times B. Or, yeah, so here we try to multiply Q0 to here so that here we have Q, Q0. So on the left side we have Q, Q0. And then also on the upper stage of the, of the upper part, we have R square in the, uh, in the denominator. And for the lower part, we have R in the denominator. Okay, so here, uh, from here to here, we, we have this uh, simple multiplication simple multiplication, but from top to bottom, we need to use this line integral or the gradient operator to go from top to bottom or, go, or bottom to top. Similarly, for force and potential, even in mechanics, even for mechanics, you also have this kind of equation like F, the force is actually negative, the gradient of the potential energy. Yeah, like yeah, for example, if you have an Earth, and then there will be some something like the gravitational force, and then there will be uh, potential energy. So if you need to find the force, it will be like a negative gradient of U, or vice versa, it, it should be like F dot dS integration. Okay, without negative sign, it is the work done. But if the, with the negative sign, it will be the potential energy with the potential energy. So you can also convert F and U uh, from bottom to top and top to bottom by the gradient operator or the line integral. Okay, so this slide somehow summarizes what we have learned in the previous four chapters. Okay, so here we come up with uh, some uh, sample problem. Sample problem. And I think I will just skip this one because this is one of the um, selected problems, so I will just skip it. Just, just skip it. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll do the second one. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and also the third one. Okay, so um, here, a plastic wall has been bent into a circle of radius R equals 8.2 centimeter. It has a charge Q1 to be 1.2 picocoulomb, uh, uniform distributed along one quarter of its circumference, and a charge Q2 equals negative 6 Q1, uniform distributed along the rest of the circumference. Okay, so here we have two segments. One of it is uh, this part, and uh, the other one is this part. Of, okay, for Q1, it distributes along a, a quarter of a square, uh, of a circle. And then for Q2, it distributes uh, uh, along three quarters of a circle. Okay, so 
and uh, yeah, so it asks with v equals zero at infinity, what is the electric potential at the center C of a circle? So it just asks you uh, the potential at this point. Okay, so it will be very easy. Uh, if you try to just separate uh, this circle into small pieces, every small pieces will have a distance out to the center. Okay, for this one, uh, uh, out to the center. So every point will be the same thing. So which means that this integration will shrink down to just a multiplication or it will be just like Vc to be k times. So this part is q1. q1 over r and then plus q2 over r. So this is just that easy. You don't need to consider any um, direction any direction so here making use of q2 equals negative 6q1 so we just have a k times q1 over r plus negative 6q1 over r okay like this and then it will be nothing but negative uh, 5kq1 over r Okay, so we can just plug in the number negative 5 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9th power times Q1 is this one. Uh, 1.2 times 10 to pico. Pico is negative 12. <coughs> okay, and then R. R is 8.2 centimeter. 0 0.082. Like this. So the value is negative 2.3 volt uh, negative 2.3 volt so usually calculating the voltage or the electric potential will be will be easy will be easy especially for the symmetrical case for the symmetrical case you don't really need to consider any kind of uh, direction then if the rate if the distance from a point to the desired point is a constant then yeah then you just need to consider the total charge amount divided by the by the distance okay for the second question uh, it asks the same thing but uh, it asks you what is the potential at point P at point P point P is here point P is here P is actually perpendicular uh, PC is actually perpendicular to the circle and then go through the center point okay so which means that every point on the circle to this one is still a is still a uh, is still a constant is still a constant it means that uh, this is R this is D so this is like uh, this is like small r to be square root of uh, r square plus d square. For every point, it will be like that. All the all the way to be small r, to be r square plus d square and take the square root. So, yeah, well, if you only need to calculate the potential, it will be still easy. But if you need to calculate the e field at this point, it will be it will it might not be possible. <laughs> But at least it will be uh, difficult because you need to consider the x-axis component, y-axis component, and then canceling something. And then finally, you come up with this one. Maybe you can still... Oh, no, no, no. Maybe I, I, I don't think you can because, yeah, this is not so symmetric. This is not so symmetric. So the answer will be quite complicated. Or maybe there won't be any uh, closed form solution. Maybe there won't be any cosine solution, but I think for at least for this one, we only need to calculate the 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 potential at point P, so it will be easy. So here we have R equals square root of capital R square plus D square. Okay, so we can plug in the number to calculate R first, small R first. So D is this one, R is that one, 
Oh, both of them are centimeter. So we can just write uh, 8.2 squared plus 6.71 squared and then take the square root. So this number will still be centimeter. 10.6 centimeter. Okay. Be careful, centimeter is a, not a, 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 an SI unit. Later on, we, you need to change it to 0 0.106 meter. But for this one, as much as this is R uh, square and then take the square root, so it should keep the same SI unit. So here I just use the centimeter to, yeah, yeah, it is still okay. Otherwise, if you are cautious, uh, where, uh, you don't really uh, uh, sure that whether we should change it to SI unit, uh, then then you you can change it. Then you you just here you you use a uh, zero point zero eight two square plus zero point zero six seven one square, and then take the square root, and then this num the the answer will be a uh, zero point one zero six meter. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Here we try to calculate V sub P, which will be negative 5Q1 over, uh, I mean, uh, it should be 5KQ1 over R. Okay, similar to this one. Similar to this one. The only difference is that we change this capital R to small r only. Okay, of course the, 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 the position is actually the same. You can write it as k times q1 over small r plus q2 over small r, and then and then you will go to here. But yeah, I just yeah just directly go to here. Just change capital R to small r, and this small r is this value. So it turns out to be negative five times 8.99 times 10 to the ninth power times q1. This one. 1.2 times 10, uh, 10 to negative 12 all over 0 0.106 uh, meter okay so this number will be negative 1.78 volt ah, negative 1.78 volt Okay, so uh, it is an easy uh, sample uh, example. Okay, so we still have an a uh, the last one to finish off this chapter. So here it says um, a plastic disc of radius capital R is charged on one side with uniform surface charge density sigma. And then three quadrants, 三个象限, of the disk are removed. With V equals zero at infinity, what is the potential due to the remaining quadrant at point P, which is the uh, which is on the central axis of the original disk at distance capital D from the original center? Okay, so these are the original disk, and then three quadrants are removed. So the remaining one is this uh, uh, green area. And then we would like to calculate the potential at point P. Okay, if we connect P to the center point, let's say this is C. Okay, PC is perpendicular to the circle and then go through the, the central line. Okay, so um, of course in the pure slide, we already come up with the uh, expression here if it is a complete disk okay so the originally the expression include these parts include these parts so we don't really need to uh, repeat the whole procedure uh, repeat the whole procedure actually if we know for the whole disk it should have this uh, potential if we only have one quadrant then the potential here should be one quarter because uh, when you consider this quadrant and this quadrant and also this quadrant, this quadrant so these four quadrants are symmetrical to each other so everyone should contribute one fourth of the total uh, potential 
at point P. If it if you consider E field, that that's not the case because part of them will be cancelled. But if you consider voltage or electric potential, it's just scalar sum. So as much as all these parts are symmetrical to this point P, which means that each part will just contribute one fourth of the total uh, electric potential. That's why if you consider one quadrant, then it should be one fourth to the total uh, electric potential for the whole disk. Okay, that's why we can just multiply one fourth to this expression we got before. So in this case, we can directly substitute the number. Okay, so four times two is eight. So we have one eight, uh, and then sigma. Sigma is this value, seven point seven three times. Oh, uh, again, frontal, ten to negative fifteen, and then epsilon naught, eight point eight five times ten to negative twelve, and then times uh, square root of. C square plus R square, C square, Z square. Okay, Z square in this in this problem is D. So we, here, this Z is D. Okay, so this is D. It should become uh, D square plus R square, and then take the square root and then minus D. Okay, yeah. So D D is um D D is twenty five point nine centimeter, zero point two five nine square plus uh R R is this one zero point six four square and then minus zero point two five nine okay. So this number will be uh four point seven one times ten to negative five volt. Okay, so this is the answer.